Welcome to Significant TV, Significant Stories from Significant Entrepreneurs. I'm Fran McNeil, your host, and joining me in the studio today is Dr. Monique Gary. Dr. Monique Gary is a breast surgical oncologist, and she's also the director of the Cancer Risk. I'll have you finish it off for me. The Cancer Genetic Risk and uh, uh, Prevention Program okay. at Grandview Health. And so she'll share more about that in a few moments. Dr. Monique, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Uh, you know, it's really very exciting. Before we got started uh, with the official show, we were all kind of talking in the studio about the importance of breast, he breast health and the degree to which some people sort of ignore the fact that cancer might be an option, might be in their medical history, and um, kind of avoid some of the steps that they need to take. Why is that? Why is there such a fear of cancer? I think it's probably twofold, mm -hmm. and I, I think the first part of it, so um, it's that it's easy to, it's easy to ignore. It's very easy to, um, as, particularly as African American women, we're nurturers, we're caregivers, mm -hmm. we're busy professionals, we're entrepreneurs, we're doing everything for everyone else, and, and our health can often take a back seat to that because there's a lot of fear associated with getting a diagnosis. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the second part of that is that our providers have to really learn to take a, an adequate history. If no one ever asks you, does right. cancer run in your family? Okay. Or if they only ask you, does cancer run in your family, but they don't ask you which relatives and how old they were, and really tease out the history, a, a woman may not know her actual risk for the development of breast cancer. Mm. So I think there's work to be done in terms of education, uh, the women in our community, that prevention uh, equals being proactive. Mm. You know, and if you don't look, you'll never know. But right. that there's no harm in that process. There's no fear. It's actually empowering right. to, to be proactive about your breast health. Right. Proactive. Mm -hmm. I like that. So your title, which was a little bit longer, sure. would you repeat that part again? Because it had risk in it. Mm -hmm. Cancer and risk. Absolutely. So in addition to being a breast surgical oncologist, which means that I'll, all I do all day is breast cancer care mm -hmm. and uh, see patients for mainly cancer, but also for uh, non-cancer breast issues, mm -hmm. I, I run a program at Grandview uh, which is called the Cancer Genetic Risk uh, assessment and prevention program mm -hmm. and the goal of this program is to help women identify what their actual risk is for the development of breast mm -hmm. cancer are they at the highest risk meaning do they have mistakes in their genes that have been maybe passed on to them right. and they're at risk for passing on to others mm -hmm. and the third part of that is to figure out what should we do for your breast screening how often should you see a doctor what types of images should you get mm -hmm. and so it's a, a surveillance program but also screening women to determine who's at the highest risk for breast cancer mm -hmm. So when you look at those statistics, particularly for African American women, what are you finding and what does that mean for women in the community? Okay, so for the general population, 75% of breast cancers are sporadic, meaning there's no other risk factor other than you got older and you're a woman. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, and the numbers are astounding, meaning one in eight. Mm -hmm. You can count in my office, there are eight women who work there. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'll look around the room and I'll say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ooh. But the statistic is that every two minutes, every two minutes in the United States, a woman is diagnosed with breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And African American women are uh, disproportionately affected mm -hmm. by that diagnosis. So we tend to be diagnosed later. Mm -hmm. We tend to have more aggressive tumors. We tend to have a higher mortality mm -hmm. uh, than, than our counterparts, uh, particularly than, than white women. Mm -hmm. The percentage of, of diagnosis is, is still higher in the Caucasian population, mm -hmm. but we're later we're far worse, we die sooner. Mm. So given the knowledge that you have and the fact that being proactive and taking steps to prevent cancer and doing the assessment is part of what you do now, how did you get involved in the medical field in the first place? Because you have a, a doctor, doctorate of osteopathic medicine, um, which is a little different than some of the other physicians. It is, and it's been a very uh, purpose path. Mm -hmm. So looking at my childhood, I come from a family of, of, of women who worked in medicine. My grandmother was a nurse at Albert Einstein in Philadelphia. Oh, wow. My mother was an LPN. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I watched my mother get diagnosed with ovarian cancer very early. She was 29, oh, and I was seven young. years old. And so I didn't remember a lot of what happened to her, but I remember that she got very sick very quickly. There was a little bit of chemotherapy, and then she didn't make it to 30. 
Mm. And so my grandmother took us in, and she was a diabetic, and I remember watching her take her blood sugars, and I had a little stethoscope, and I would go over and try to, <sighs> you know, listen to her heart and try mm -hmm. to give her her injections of her insulin, and, mm -hmm. you know, I, she was my very first patient. Ah. Uh, and uh, so it's, it's been wonderfully full circle watching her, uh, her health. She, she recently passed away in April, mm -hmm. and That's I was living in D.C., and I made it just in time to come and see her. We took her home on hospice, and she was my very first patient, and I sat there with her until she took her last breath, and we sang praise songs and hymns, and we read our Bible, and it was really something to, to get to see her transition. Uh, but I watched her have breast cancer twice. Twice? Twice. In 1988, she had left breast cancer. I think it was invasive ductal, but back then, you know, women didn't really talk about it, especially with your young granddaughter who's oh, exactly. 12 years right. old. Right. You know, we knew something was going on, but she was in the hospital, and next thing we know, she had a mastectomy, and she had a huge scar across her breast, and she said, well, the doctors told me I have six months to live. Mm. And she lived another three years only to get breast cancer in the right breast. Wow. And she underwent the same radical surgery, and they told her she had six months to live. And she lived another 25 years after oh, that. Wow! And, and so, you know, for me, the lesson is in the the, the power of the human spirit. Mm -hmm. It's in the the, um, the amazing miracle of our our human bodies, even when we're afflicted with disease. Uh, so, having a mother with ovarian cancer and a grandmother with breast cancer, mm -hmm. I'm sort of uniquely positioned to talk to women about breast and ovarian cancer and about women's right. health because I've been there. Right. When I do genetic counseling, I sat in that seat. Mm -hmm. And I had to wait those weeks for those test results to come back to know if I, I had an 80% or 90% risk of breast cancer in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. And so I'm able to identify with their fear. I'm right. able to uh, tap into and maybe help them tap into their strength. Right. And, and it just it makes for good days. It really it does. does. It's such a purposeful, purposeful life. Mm. Wow. So as you're working with people um, and you're at Grandview Health, mm -hmm. um, you're also here in the Philadelphia area doing workshops, meeting with women. Um, how do you combine all those different ways of interacting with women and getting the message out? That is the, the joy and the fun part of what I get to do. And mm -hmm. it isn't something that anyone teaches you. So when you finish your training, you could go into private practice and you could mm -hmm. be your own, you know, your own business, mm -hmm. which is a, a great sort of a sense of entrepreneurship for a physician. But many of us go into hospital employment because the private practice model has really changed and it's hard, it's hard to make a living as a private physician. Mm -hmm. So you go work for your hospital, you maybe have regular hours and you take great vacations, mm -hmm. but the, the piece um, that matters most to me is a community outreach. And so whether it's out in Sellersville, Pennsylvania, where there's a strong Mennonite and a Hindu population, um, I'm able to go to health fairs and go to their places of worship and mm -hmm. talk to them about their breast health and how to do a breast exam and what does normal even feel like? Has anyone ever told you what your normal breast feels like? Right, who would know? Who would know? I well, mean, you have them, but who would know? <laughs> Absolutely, right. and so right. I spend a lot of time going over just sort of the basics of breast health with patients, and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and I get to take that to Philadelphia, every opportunity I get. And so mm -hmm. I'm invited to speak to uh, students at the universities, oh, uh, high great. school students, college great. students, every single level, there's something for them to learn and there's something that they identify with because almost everybody knows someone who had either breast cancer or some other form of cancer that potentially could have been prevented. Mm -hmm. And so there's this huge focus on recognizing it and encouraging others to, to feel free enough and to feel empowered enough to, to be proactive about their health. And that's the message, and, and a child can carry that message. I was just going to say, the core message mm -hmm. for you is, is really about proactive. It is, and proactive. it's so much fun to do. I, I see the joy. I, I see the passion. I, I love it, and I tell mm -hmm. them, you know, ask your questions. Anything mm -hmm. you're ever afraid to ask a doctor, this is a safe space to do so. You know, what mm -hmm. are the myths? What do you think? Do you think bras cause breast cancer? Mm -hmm. Do you think it's contagious? Do you think that it's things that we eat? Is it environment, or is it a gene? And how many people think that it actually is a gene that gets handed down to them, mm -hmm. when the reality is a percentage of breast cancers that are hereditary. So all cancers are genetic. Mm -hmm. Something goes wrong at the factory, and the cells keep growing and growing and growing. Right. But not all the factory mistakes get passed down generation after generation. Mm -hmm. That's heredity. Mm -hmm. And maybe only 5 to 10 percent of cancers are hereditary, mm -hmm. and people don't know. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you could wave a magic wand and just help. I'll say girls from 9 to, let's say, 39, to young women of 39, what would you do with that magic wand? Oh, boy. 
That's a great question. Mm -hmm. um, and there, there's, there's so much, but I think the, the most important lesson, and, and I think of it in terms of if I could go back and talk to my seven-year-old self when my mother died, oh, or my ten-year-old okay. self, my eighteen-year-old self when I graduated from high school and I said, I'm going to be a doctor, mm -hmm. what would I say to that young lady? What would I mm -hmm. say to these women? And um, I think the, the thing I would wave my wand to do is to help them be able to tap into what their purpose is mm -hmm. in life. Okay. So it's a beautiful okay. and a wonderful thing to be a, mm -hmm. a physician. It's such a, a privilege and it's a joy. I, I, love, I love my life and I love what I do, my career, but my career speaks to what my purpose is. Mm. My purpose is to help people. Right. And right. so whether that is through, um, through journalism, through entrepreneurship, through medicine, whatever that is, your life and your goals have to reflect your sense of purpose. And that's not something I understood. And I think most mm. of us don't look at our lives in that sort of global sense. We look for jobs, we look for careers, right, we go right. to college, our families right. tell us these are the things that we should do. We get this education, but if you can tap into what your purpose is a little earlier in life, mm -hmm. you'll get there that much quicker and I think you really see and, and reap the rewards of a, of a robust life of service. Mm. A life of service. Absolutely. Share us, we have a few moments left. Uh, share with us a, a story of interacting with someone that just sort of warms your heart that you kn where you know that you made a difference in that person's life oh, and I'm sure there's lots of them <laughs> there 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 are um, <clears throat> I had a patient um, very recently uh, who felt a lump mm -hmm. and she ignored this lump for some time she has a seven-year-old daughter and um, um, a partner in her life who had passed away uh, of her life partner passed away of kidney cancer and she said mm -hmm. I watched him die of renal cancer and you know I've got this daughter I'm working at this factory and I work 12 hours a day you know four or five days a week I don't have time for this I don't have time for cancer and mm -hmm. she was terrified mm -hmm. you know and um, I was able to walk her from the initial imaging the mammogram that showed something wrong to the biopsy to the surgery and the the great part of what I do in in surgery is that um, I get to put on my pink high top Converse sneakers and I get to cut out <laughs> cancers you know and, and you, you, oh. you can't save everybody but in this right. instance and before surgery she had a little teddy bear and she said my half sister had cancer and before she died of breast cancer she gave me this little teddy bear and mm. she said can I bring it into the operating room and I said no you can't bring anything in. It's not sterile. <laughs> you can't bring anything but I can and I said I'm gonna put it in my back pocket because oh. I'm covered in a gown. I wash my hands and they put gloves, two sets of gloves and a gown on me. So my scrubs underneath, while they're, they're clean, they don't have to be sterile, they don't interact, they don't touch anything. Mm -hmm. And I said, so I'm gonna put your bear in my pocket mm -hmm. so that you'll know that it's in the room mm -hmm. and it'll be there during the surgery. And the surgery went beautifully well uh, and, and it was a, a good outcome for her and for her seven-year-old daughter to be able to watch her mother overcome breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it was <clears throat> uh, amazing in the sense that she went from feeling complete despair to feeling empowerment. And she comes mm -hmm. to our support groups and she has a slogan. She says, you know what, I'm gonna beat it, I'm gonna treat it, beat it, and move on. Mm. And that's been the slogan for our t-shirt, for our team for the walk in October. Oh, she designed our okay. t-shirt. Yep, oh. treat it, beat it, and move on. Love it. It, it is. It's, it. It, that's the best part of what I get to do is to watch her change her entire life. She stopped smoking. She lost weight. She changed her diet. Wow. All because this cancer was a wake-up call. Mm -hmm. And I said to her, I said, you know, this. here's the thing. Nobody wants cancer. No. Cancer sucks. Mm -hmm. I said, but when you use cancer as a tool to change your life, watch what happens. Mm. And that's the beautiful part of, of, of this life, this human experience, is that every, right. every trial can turn into a, a, a triumph or at right. least a transformation. What a wonderful way to close our interview. Would you share with the audience how they can get in touch with you? What's Absolutely. Um, so, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> I, I can be reached through the uh, Grandview website, so www.gbh.org uh, for appointments. Mm -hmm. um, uh, my office hours are Monday through Thursday and Fridays I am in the operating room. I can also be reached uh, at www.drmoniquegarry.com uh, and this is a website where you can reach me for speaking engagements, uh, for mentoring, for uh, personal consultations and discussions with patients about breast health as well. I'm also yes. on uh, LinkedIn, Dr. Mm -hmm. Monique Gary. Uh, I am on, I'm on the Twitter. Oh, uh, okay. Just join okay. the Twitter. Okay. And uh, I'm Dr. Monique Gary or, or lovely lady doc 
at Twitter. Okay. Uh, okay. So, so I can certainly be reached through all those means. Terrific. Well, thank you again. Thank this you. This is for energizing me. and, it's, it's been and a very motivating. Thank you, thank you so, so much. much. Significant stories, significant entrepreneurs, and significant impact. Our guest today is Dr. Monique Gary. Join us as we continue to listen and learn.